today on TFI CAD Tips we have a cylinder, a cylinder that moves, and a cylinder that's bloody broken. Yeah, well, anyway, what it doesn't matter. We're going to look at flexible assemblies. What's a flexible assembly? I will show you. Patience, calm down. Oh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there in my own time. Yeah, right. So we've got a we've got an assembly that moves, and that's a critical thing for when you're working with flexible assemblies. You need an assembly that can move within itself, needs degrees of freedom, typical examples, things like cylinders, suspension forks, uh, scissors, anything that's got kind of movement within it that's not fully constrained. And the problem, the problem that you may have come across uh, or you may be trying to fix right now is when you place that assembly into another assembly and make it a sub-assembly, uh, you can place, you know, let's do, did you know you could do this? Did you know you can drag and drop like that into there? What do you do now? Uh, when it's placed and made into a sub-assembly, the movement stops. You can't move that component. It can't move within itself, if you know what I mean, when it's a sub-assembly. So to fix this problem, it's super quick and super easy, and I'm super never going to put the word super before word again, I promise. You right-click on it, and you make it flexible. That's it. And now it can move. Way. Uh, what you can also do as well is uh, if you've got more than one instance of that assembly, like like if I would grab him there, did you know you could do that? Did you? Did you know you could do that? Ah, three, four. Well, if you've got multiple instances of the same assembly, you can have them all in different positions. Look at that. You know you could do that? Well, you do now. Yeah, no, brilliant. So there you go. That's flexible assemblies. A couple of th a couple of uh, stipulations with flexible assemblies. Parts can't be flexible, obviously, because there's no movement within a part. Weldment assemblies can't be flexible, and an assembly can't be adaptive and flexible at the same time. I just think the logistics of it just don't work. So uh, there, there are a couple of things to be careful of. And this is a bit of an overlap from a video I've already done, which I trust you watched. I trust you watched. You might not have done. Uh, but if, um, if you're wondering why this happens when you've got uh, parts and assemblies that kind of move... Uh, you've got to uh, you've got to work with contact sets, but like I said, I've already done a video on this, so uh, you click that, hold down Control, click that. They're the two components that will collide. Right click and then put them on a contact set, and then you get this little magnet thing here, which is actually two blocks hitting each other. And then you go to the Inspect tab and activate the contact solver, and then doof, clunk, they will now touch. And in the assembly that they've been placed in, you also need to activate the contact solver as well for that to work. And then poof, poof, they will all start hitting each other. There you go, there you go. So that's flexible assemblies for your ass. Yes. Uh, if you found that useful, please press like on the video, share it around, share it, share it. So little bit, little bit. Uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Thank you very much to everyone that subscribed recently. Got like 2,200, which just boggles my mind. A lowly little CAD channel like me. 2,200. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, put some comments down below if there's anything you want to ask, that sort of thing. And yeah, thanks. See ya.